this is Mrs. Smekins. And in this lesson series, we've been starting to look at comparing multiple texts or multiple topics. And we learned in the last lesson that the Venn diagram is only so helpful. It helps us separate information from two texts or topics, but it doesn't really help us organize and really drill down to how two very different things are similar. Instead, as readers and writers, we want to use the T-chart. And we learned that you put the topic or the text for the first one, text A, topic A, on the left, and you list everything you know about that first one. And you list everything you know about the second text or topic in its own side, in the right-hand column. But the secret to the T-chart is the middle column, and it's how you're grouping information by categories or rows. These categories, this is what helps you as the reader really start to assess what you know about two individual texts or topics and also how to compare them, how to look across the rows of a single category and see what is similar and what is different. Okay, so in the previous lesson, we did this with topics. I think we looked at um, e-school versus traditional school. I looked at chips versus Pringles, TV shows, right? We looked at sports, or maybe you looked at different kinds of social media in your task. In this lesson, I want to take the same idea of comparative thinking, but I want to move us to text, okay? So we had done it on topics. Now I want to actually look at text. And in particular, I want to look at literature stories, fictional text, all right? And remember, when we look at two texts, you have to read all of one and understand it, then read all of the other and understand it, and then you can finally start doing the after reading thinking where you're comparing. And that's not just noticing differences, but looking for how two very different things are similar. Okay, so if we do this with literature and we're considering how to group the information, what the category should be when you're comparing two stories, it's always, 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 always going to be the same categories and they're always story elements. And that's why we start with literature when we first start learning how to compare two texts is because the grouped information is, is it just never changes. It's taken to the bank, guaranteed, you know exactly what it's going to be it's going to be story elements. And we remember story elements, right? We use the same key story elements when we were summarizing a text. We had to summarize the character, the setting, the problem, the solution, right? Boom, that's the same thing. These will be the categories when comparing two pieces of literature. Okay, now, I also want to really emphasize why this lesson, this skill comparing text is the last one and why I waited to really teach you how to do this is because if you can't read and tell me a lot about the main character of one text, you know, tell me what the main character does, says, thinks, and feels. Give me character traits for one character. Then you can't do it for two and compare them. If you can't tell me that setting is when and where, its mood, its tone, if you can't tell me plot is drilling down to this text problem and solution, if you can't do it for one text, then we can't compare two texts. So we always work first just on one text, really reading and thinking about one text at a time. But eventually we have to honor that readers do juggle multiple texts. There are times they read two stories. Why would they do it? To compare them. All right. And theme, of course, is the message that the author is trying to teach us, right? Okay, so I would like to try this and, and model uh, this with, with two simple stories. We all have background knowledge on, okay? And we don't actually have to read. But I want to make another point in this lesson. The first point I'm making is that whenever it's two stories, it's always organized, categorized, grouped by story elements, Okay, I'll make the second point after we finish the quick lists. We're going to do all of the Wizard of Oz, and then we're going to look at all of the key points of the three little pigs. Then we're going to look for similarities and differences across, and I want to add something when we do that similarity difference piece. Okay, so let's just do a real quick recap of the Wizard of Oz. 
only thinking about the Wizard of Oz. Character, setting, plot, and, and theme. All right, so we got Dorothy. She's on the yellow brick road a lot. How does she feel? Uh, she's anxious. She's scared. Things are popping out and scaring her all the time. So she's pretty and she's anxious to get home. She wants to get home. All right. Uh, traits, kind and gentle. All right. To different characters she meets along the way. All right. Setting. Well, there's the tornado at the beginning, but the main setting's the the land of Oz. Okay, plot summary, uh, the tornado whisks her away. She wants to get home. The wizard says he'll help her as long as she brings the broom from the Wicked Witch of the West. <clears throat> and while she's trying to get that broom, she's meeting all these characters. All right. Um, and then she does finally get home when she realizes she had the power all along, which leads us to the theme, right? That you possess everything you need inside you already. <clears throat> How to be self-sufficient. Another theme or life lesson maybe is that loyal or reliable friends can really help you uh, in achieving your goals. Okay, so that was all of text A, The Wizard of Oz. Now we're gonna do all of text B, okay? Super fast, just a quick recap, okay? Because I can't even do comparative thinking until I look at them individually first. So three pigs, what do we got? We got three pigs building houses. Uh, the first two pigs are a little lazy. They rush through the process. The third one's a little smarter, okay? It happens all in a woods and they're building houses. Why are they building houses? To escape the wolf who wants to eat them, right? And they all are safe in the third brick house. Okay, life lessons, um, do it right the first time, right? Be smarter the first time. The brick, the third pig was smarter than the first two. Um, hard work, taking the time to do the hard work of, of the brick house is it, that more dedicated perseverance will pay off in the end. Okay, you can come up with others, but you see what we're doing. Okay, so now, now that I've read the text individually, now I'm ready to really start comparing. And how do I compare? We learned in the last lesson, I look row by row. And in this case, that's story element by story element. And after reading the two texts individually, as I look row by row, I must make sure that I don't just have differences in the, each of the story elements because of course they're different. They're two different stories. What I really have to do is figure out how are they similar? I probably noticed a lot of differences in the first read. Now I've got to really pause and after reading, think about similarities. Okay, so that said, if I go row by row and I just look at um, the main characters in both of these, then um, I'm going to maybe notice some of the following things. Um, the characters in The Wizard of Oz um, do a lot of walking, right? On that yellow brick road, they're doing a lot of working cardio, right? Exercising. But the pigs are also, they're building and they're hammering and they're dragging their materials over and they're running between the houses and they're doing a lot of exercise and cardio too. So there is a similarity in what the characters do. I think we could say that um, Dorothy's a little naive to some things, okay? How things work. And I think the first two pigs are not only lazy, but they're not very smart. You know, sticks would blow over, right? Straw blows over. And so not only are they a little lazy, but they aren't super smart in their choices. They also could be described as naive. I'm looking across, all right? I look across the main setting for both of these. And, and so I have, you know, Tornado and Oz, very different than Sunny in the Woods. Well, now, wait a minute. Woods. Don't they travel throughout the forest and the woods all along that yellow brick road? Yeah. So there is a similar element to the setting. It's the woods in Oz, but it's still forest or woods. Okay. And although it was a tornado at the beginning, the sun is shining for pretty much the entire Wizard of Oz musical. And so sunny, sunny morning in the pigs and sunny in the land of Oz, I could play off of that similar element right? So you look for a detail and you try to think how, if at all, does it relate across the row? All right. The, the plots are very different, but the in The Wizard of Oz, um, the whole gang of characters is on a quest. They're on a quest to get to, to the wiz wizard to get something. And, and they're all working toward the same goal. And aren't the pigs working toward the same goal? Survive the eating of the wolf, right? Not to be eaten and, and escape from him. So common goals among a group of people. 
that that would be something I could look at. Another is the whole idea of the wind. You know, the tornado is a big memorable moment at the beginning of Wizard of Oz. So wind, gusts of wind, tornado. Well, it's not a tornado, but gusts of wind in the three pigs. <sighs> Enough air to blow over a house. So we got gusts of wind there too. See what I'm doing? I'm looking for it. All right, across. We learned this in the last lesson. You do them individually and then you look across and you try to pull on some similarities. Okay. And then theme wise, again, very different themes, but that whole idea of the pigs helping each other. The third pig is loyal and helpful and is a place for, for the other two pigs to come to. They're all working together to achieve their goal. So that loyalty that we saw in the whiz, we also see in the pigs. So I've got some similarities. Okay. In this lesson, what we're working to do is to really kind of drill down the, uh, the skill, review the skill of all the details for text A. And when it's a story, it's story elements. All the details for text B. And when it's a story, it's story elements. And we reviewed this idea of adding more details, right? Okay, so now here's what I want to do. In this lesson, I want to, I want to take it one step further and remind you that readers don't just read and have thoughts and share them orally and they can explain them in writing. So in this lesson, I want to add another piece. In addition to story elements are always your categories when it's, when it's literature, I want to kind of give you uh, a sneak peek as to, so how would you explain what you've learned? How, how do you go about explaining comparisons you've made? All right. And so the, the secret to this is, again, to stay row by row. OK, so now you do the explaining after you've done the listing, the grouping, the comparing. Now it's time to explain whether it's orally or it's in writing. You're going to explain. And the secret to this is transitions. What you're going to want to do in every row is identify some things that are different using words like although, unlike, different, instead. But you also have to make sure that you talk about some similarities. So I just want us to kind of practice this idea of putting sentences together, putting details, because we just have bulleted details up there about each text regarding main character. And how would you kind of pull on those details and weave them into sentences together. All right, we're just going to do this orally. Let me do it first and then I'll ha have you chime in and help me. OK, so um, main characters. So if I'm going to talk about the, the main characters being the pigs and Dorothy, OK, between these two texts, um, there, there's no rule. You don't have to start with similarities. You don't have to start with differences, okay? You can start wherever you want. In fact, I think sometimes that idea of variety is nice because when a teacher says you must always start with this, then everybody starts to sound the same, very robotic, very formulaic. So pull on whatever you, you think is most interesting to you, what seems most important, similarities or differences. Just jump in, but just make sure you don't stop talking until you've done both similarities and differences for that row. OK, so I might say something like this. Um, um, I'm going to use this one. Blank and blank are alike. The Wizard of Oz and the Three Little Pigs are alike because some of their main characters have similar feelings. Dorothy is very anxious about things that scare her on her journey and just to get home while the first their three pigs are anxious to escape the wolf who wants to eat them. See how I did that? OK, a lot of words, long sentences, right? Compound sentences, but I'm, I'm pulling on these. OK, I, I could give another similarity. Um, the, uh, the characters in both texts also um, exhibit a lot of cardio exercise. Dorothy is walking while the pigs are building houses. See? So I, I said both texts have da 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 da. Okay, well now I gotta I gotta demonstrate what this looks like when I throw in because the same row, the same paragraph needs to now have uh, some reference to differences. OK, because we don't want to just show how things are similar. Part of comparing them is showing how they're different, too. OK, or contrast, as some of you say. 
Um, okay, so I could say something about, um, um, I could do blank and blank are unlike. Okay, so I usually kind of figure out how do I want to say this? What keywords or transitions I want to use? And so I might say, uh, Dorothy and the first two pigs um, are different or unlike each other, dissimilar, are quite different from each other in terms of personality traits. Dorothy is kind and gentle, while the pigs, the first two pigs, demonstrate they're lazy and rush through their work, right? And, and so this is, this is what I'm doing. And I could keep going bullet by bullet and really have a, a meaty paragraph here. Okay, help me out on this next one. Let's do the setting. I'll jump to the setting here on our screen. And so we have some very clear differences and we have some similarities, okay? So let's start, let's start with differences this time. Okay, let's start with, um, I'll kick it off and you tell me how you would finish these sentences. Um, the setting in The Wizard of Oz begins with a tornado, okay? With uh, the weather, uh, uh, like a tornado, okay? However, the three little pigs is different in that setting, it takes place, good, on a sunny morning. Great. Okay. Let's talk about a similarity. Let's play on the, the where. That was weather. Now let's talk about the where, this idea of the woods and the fo forest. Okay. How about uh, blank and blank? Or how about... The setting is similar, or one aspect of the setting is similar in the two texts because, keep going, why? The majority of The Wizard of Oz takes place in a woods or a forest, and so does The Three Pigs. Okay. See what we're doing? Want to try another one? Let's do plot. Let's do plot, okay? And we'll we'll start off just with very clear differences. Uh, the wizard will help Dorothy if she gets the broom from the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay, now give me the plot of the three pigs. Let's start that sentence with the transition word. However, okay, however, the three pigs, give me the plot. Try to escape the wolf. How? By building houses. Good. Boom. Did it. Okay. So we just showed a difference. Okay. So now let's zoom in on a torn uh, tornado. Let's zoom in on a, a similarity. Okay. And let's do the wind. Let's do tornado from the wind and gusts of wind from the wolf blowing. Okay. How would you start the sentence? Both stories, both plots include. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, a key element of wind or gusts of wind through the wolf blowing and the tornado at the beginning uh, of The Wizard of Oz. Okay, let's try another similarity. In addition, the two texts, what? Are similar, okay, or are alike, how? Look, look at the second to last bullet. The main characters are working together to achieve a common goal. And then you could go on to say, in The Wizard of Oz, they're trying to get to the wizard, right? And uh, they're on a quest, a journey. Uh, and Three Little Pigs are trying to escape the wolf. And so that idea of survival. Okay, see what we're doing here? So not only in this lesson did we review that T charts to compare is the way to go and that we do all of A and all of B and we organize it by categories. Not only did we review, but we learned that when it's literature, the categories are always story elements. Every time, every time, they're always story elements. Okay. Um, but we also started to play a little bit with the notion that 
after you've kind of done the comparative thinking that readers have to be able to explain their thinking, articulate orally or in writing, articulate the similarities and differences. So we started to play with transition words to look at the sentence structure and how you would start to use those details across the rows and put them together in oral sentences. OK. All right. So if you were in Mrs. Smackin's class, here's what your task would be. Do you remember reading the carpet fitter? Remember Eddie and the parakeet and the pounding of the, he thought the lump was cigarettes. All right, and American Pepper when Sabney got the um, silver pot of what she thought was pepper, but it was really the ashes of her great aunt. Okay, so what I would like you to do is just focus in on carpet fitter and give me the key details for that first text. Now you've already read this text. I'm gonna give it to you again, all right? And, and you can read it, I want you to read it again. That's normal, readers reread. But you might also have some of the information about the characters, about the plot. You might have some of this already in some of your older notes. So you're welcome to go back to those. But I want you to do all of text A, carpet fitter. Then I want you to reread and do all of text B, American Pepper, and I'll give you that, okay? Then Then you're not done, okay? And you're doing this for the story elements. But what I want you to do when you think you're done, you've done each individual column, is now do the hard work of after reading thinking, where you think, what is similar about these two very different legends? You have to find similarities in each row, okay? So we're doing this with literature. If you were in Mrs. Meckett's class, that's what we'd be doing. But your teacher might have a better idea.